Good morning. So I'm in Acts 17. And this is where Paul is talking to, basically, well, he's talking to the whole world. And this is the purpose of the Messiah. So many, like, there's 2.4 billion, you know, around about 2.4 billion Christians that don't know this. So those of us who have read the Bible are going to explain things in a way that should, that certain people are going to want to hear. And most people will not want to hear, just according to prophecy. Judgment comes to the house of God first, and the righteous scarcely make it in. And people don't like hearing those kinds of things. They don't like to be told that offenses may come to... If you offend one of the little ones that believe in him, it'd be better a millstone be wrapped around your neck and you'd be tossed into the ocean because the ocean isn't on fire. See, people don't like to be warned about hell. They like to go la, 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 because they want, they don't want to choose life. Okay, Yeshua said, if you choose to enter into life, then keep my commandments or keep the commandments of God. That's what he did. And he says, like I kept my father's commandments, you follow after me and keep my father's commandments also. And then I'll give you the spirit of truth and the truth will set you free. So, this is Paul talking to, to the people about what God wants them to repent from. And it's, he gave, this is the reason why he rose him from the dead. Because, okay, the northern kingdom of Israel, okay, there's 12 tribes to Israel. And right now, by name, bloodline, all that's left is Judah and Benjamin, which is the Jews, okay? Now, they're not, they're doing a lot of bad things according to prophecy as well. But we're not talking about them at this moment. We're talking about the northern ten tribes. The prophecy about them in Ezekiel 4 and Leviticus 26, when you, when you, and even, I'll bring up 2 Kings 17. So it's up to you to go read these things. And test what I'm saying. This is what Paul always did. In fact, this is something I want to show you. I just noticed it right now. Verse, this is in Acts 18, verse 27 and 28. And when he was disposed to pass to Annika, the brethren wrote exhorting the disciples to receive him, who, when he was come, helped, helped them much which had believed through grace. Okay? If unmerited favor is what grace is, that doesn't cause you to believe. That's not what this is saying. Listen, for the next verse. For he mightily convinced the Jews and that publicly showed by the scriptures that Yeshua was the Messiah. So through the scriptures, which is the Old Testament, he showed them this was in fact the guy that all the prophets were speaking of. Okay? And all the prophets told you he's going to come and teach the Ten Commandments and magnify the law, make it honorable by telling you to love your neighbor as yourself, which is an old commandment, which means to rebuke your neighbor rather than stoning them. Sacrificial law is over. I prefer mercy, not sacrifice, and the knowledge of God more than burnt offerings. That means you got to know what his word says. He tells you that I pray not for the world, but those who are sanctified in your word, who I revealed your name unto. This is Yeshua's prayer. It's so simple, really, but people are so resistant to the truth because they have their own belief system and that's why the church goes apostate. It it's, has to happen. It's just like Judas had to betray Yeshua so that the prophets come true. But the reason why those who rise up in the last days as the church has fallen, okay, so the, the Messiah has to tarry for two days. The heavens must receive him. All these Christians know this stuff. They have to receive, the heavens must receive him. They, they can accept that. But they won't accept what Peter says, that he tarries for two days. And he, even Peter says, don't be ignorant of this mystery. They don't want to listen to Paul say that the falling away has to happen first. And then the return of the Messiah. And they don't want to hear anything about the very elect. Well, our obligation is to the very elect, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Because their return, Ezekiel 4 and 26, 
or Leviticus 26, Ezekiel chapter 4, is the prophecy about this. See, they got punished for, for 2,730 years because the punishment was sevenfold of 390 years if they didn't return and they did not return. That's why the Ezekiel temple didn't get built. If they were to return and be ashamed of what they did, which was what? They erected an Asheroth pole. So Romans 11, Paul warns the Gentiles that are grafted into the commonwealth of Israel, you will get cut out if you do the same thing the northern kingdom of Israel did, which was worship an Asheroth pole. So the Messiah came and he died and rose again because then he can marry the bride. Otherwise, in the law... She's unclean. So that's the whole purpose. What's Romans 7? Romans 7 explains that. That's Paul explaining the law. He's always explaining the law and the prophets, but because the Gentiles, or today's church, that like to be called Gentiles, which means without covenant, they don't want to hear. And it's bound to happen, and that's why they're going to hate the people in the last days. They're going to de deliver you up to the law and everything like that. They're already doing it right now. Okay. That's what's going on because they are predestined for the punishment. It's, they don't like the, what the Bible actually says. So what do they do? They make smoothier, tickling words, just like Paul said is going to happen. But this is just amazing. He helped them much, which had believed through grace, which is the spirit of conviction. That's God's spirit. But they blaspheme the Holy Spirit of grace and call it unmerited favor. That's the sin that won't be forgiven. Yeshua, when he's talking about it, is quoting Jeremiah 23. In the latter days, you will consider this perfectly. But when people close their ears to prophecy, they quench the spirit. Paul told you not to do that. But he, he's writing that in second, or 1 Thessalonians 5. To those who already know that the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night, they are not appointed to wrath because they don't quench the spirit. They exhort with scripture. They comfort each other. And they don't despise prophecy. Well, 1 Thessalonians 5, when they use the, the, the apostate church wants, oh, see, wrath isn't appointed to us, but they don't read the whole chapter. So just know they're liars right there. You're supposed to be warned. You were warned about this, that when the Messiah is coming, that everybody's going to be deceived except for the very elect. Well, the Christian church doesn't tell you a single thing about the very elect. That's the problem. So you have the opportunity to repent. And here's why the, the Messiah even died and rose, rose again. Because that's the whole purpose of being able to be married. Because you can't marry, if you're, according to God's word, if your wife goes and cheats on you, she's polluted. You know, she's, she's done. Don't take her back. The only way she can get married is if the husband dies. So that's why he died. He died and then God rose him from the dead so that he could remarry them, the, the, the people. You see? And that's the point. So because they believed through grace, which is God's spirit of conviction, he mightily convinced the Jews. It's about convincing. They have the conviction. They can hear through the spirit of grace and they believed it, their conscience. And he publicly showed by the scriptures that Yeshua was the Messiah. By the scriptures, because he's all throughout the scriptures. Moses told you about him. And all the prophets told you about him. And that's why the New Testament is all about the Old Testament. So the word new, even in Greek, not English, we're not talking English here, it was before it was written in Greek. New means fresh in Greek. So it was the fresh covenant because he refreshed. This is the refreshing of the covenant. That's what it, what it means. So back to Acts 8. This is, or 18, I mean. This is him talking to Gentiles here. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears, we would know, verse 20 I'm at. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all that, for all the Athens and strangers which were, were there spend their time in nothing else but either to tell or hear some new thing. Now that's very much a perspective of what you see. Each and every church out there right now today, like there's 40 to 50,000 denominations. So they just want to hear some new thing. The, oh no, we believe this. And oh no, we believe this. And like they, there's only one gospel and it's simple. That God sent his son to teach us the truth 
blessing us and turning us away from what God calls iniquity. And that's why he says, depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. He came to bless us and turning us from iniquity, which is breaking the holy covenants of promise. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, you men of Athens, I perceive that in all things you are too superstitious. Well, a superstition is just a traditions of men, not what God says. For I passed by and beheld your devotion. I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore you ignorantly worship. Him declare I unto you, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that the Lord of the heaven and earth dwelleth not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he gives to all life and breath and all things. That's how you're made in his image. He's spirit. So your conscience is what how God works. And if you sear your conscience with a hot iron, then, you know, you're, you're, you, you just destroyed your own life. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. So he's, he created <coughs> the world in seven days and a day with the Lord is a thousand years. So 6,000 years is going to, is going to, is going to be the time until the Sabbath comes, which is the millennial reign. So on the seventh day, which represents the, the Sabbath day represents the millennial reign. And that's why Paul told, or Peter told you when he's quoting Hosea chapter six, that the Lord will tarry for two days. Don't be ignorant of this. And we're not ignorant of it. And a day with the Lord is a thousand years. So the heavens must receive him until the times of restitution of all things. That's in Acts 3. So he tarries for 2,000 years, but the falling away has to happen first. And the elect have to rise up. And that's the lost sheep. And none of the pastors, all prophecy tells you is that the pastors did not look for the lost sheep. They don't care about what scripture says. So it has to happen. And woe to those pastors that destroyed and scattered his sheep. So they're in trouble for this. And that's, that's the, the way it ends. That's why they're going to be mad at us who know this. Okay? That they should seek, okay. Neither is he worshipped with men's hands as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to, to all life, breath, and all things. He hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and has determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their, of their habitation. That they should seek the Lord if haply, they may, may feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. This is our conscience. For in him we live and move and our being, as certain also of yours, your own po poets have said, for we are also his offspring. <coughs> for as much then as we are of the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's device. And the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Now the church is making graven images like crazy. The Christmas tree, the Santa Claus, the crucifix, the, the Marys, the, the, all of those images. He hates it, okay? The whole reason why the northern kingdom was dispersed, that was a punishment. They were take, the feasts were taken away from them and everything. They were kicked out of their land. He, he has power over man and he had the Assyrian come in and conquer them and take them out of there. And God, God already told you Revelation, which is quoting tons of, of scripture, tons of it about the end. And times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commands all men everywhere to repent because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man. I got to plug my phone in here. Here, I got to move some stuff. So if he's going to judge the world in righteousness by that man, 
because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he has ordained, whereof he has given assurance. This is what he did. So if they believe he rose from the dead, they have to believe what he what he taught too. That was the that's like the the icing on the cake. Okay, if you don't you believe he rose from the dead, the guy that is spoken of in the Old Testament. What the church believes is that the Christmas Jesus guy rose from the dead, not Yeshua, the Messiah, who came to bring repentance. Because he has appointed a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained, whereof he has given assurance to all men that he hath raised him from the dead. So the guy from the Old Testament he raised from the dead. Not this, but the, the superstitious beliefs that all these 40,000 denominations believe. And when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked and others said, we will hear thee again of this matter. So I just want to point that out. It's not going to be a super long video, I don't think. But the whole, all these people are making graven images. This is the, the habits of the Gentiles. And even John's, John, actually I'm going to go to John because this is very important. The whole reason, like God doesn't mess around. He's slow to anger. But he doesn't mess around. And by the way, the 2,000 years is almost up. The falling away is, is, is what it's already completely established according to prophecy. Everybody is doing exactly what this book says. They hate you for telling the truth. Okay? This is Paul, or this is John talking to the Gentiles. I rejoice greatly that I found thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech ye, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that which you have heard from the beginning, that we want, love one another. That's an old commandment. It means to rebuke now. But actually, it's the third letter that I wanted to read. So the third epistle of John, or letter of John, I have no greater joy. Hold on. This is John. I have, John is so happy about this. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children walk in truth. Beloved, thou dost faithfully whatsoever thou dost to the brethren and to the strangers, which have borne witness of thy charity, which is agape. The agape of God is to keep the Ten Commandments. This is the agape of God, that we, that we keep his commandments and they're not a burden to us. So, I mean, if you do the commandments and they're, they're actually burdensome to you, then you're really not keeping them. You're not doing it in faith which have borne witness of, of thy agape before the church, whom if thou bring forward on thy journey after a godly sort, thou shalt do well, because that for his name's sake they went forth taking nothing from the Gentiles. Taking nothing from the Gentiles means their traditions. Taking nothing from the Gentiles. They were Gentiles. You were once called a Gentile, but now that you walk in covenant, you are no longer a Gentile because you're grafted into the commonwealth of Israel. It's actually right here. I'll read it. Strange that I just opened right up to it. It's for this. And here, for by grace, you are saved. That's conviction. Conviction, like grace convinces you and your faith believes you are saved through faith. It's not of yourselves, it's a gift of God. Grace is a gift from God. It's his spirit. It is not unmerited favor. And that's why many, that's why great is the fall of that house. It's not of works, which means if they knew what the Old Testament says, God punished Israel by putting sacrificial law on them. It was added because of transgression to the covenants. That's Galatians 3.19. And it was ordained by angels, which is all talking about Deuteronomy 31. They put, he, he put the law of Moses, which was written in, in handwriting by Moses. The Ten Commandments went inside the ark, which is your heart. And then on the outside of the ark, he put the law as a testimony that the heavens and earth would, are, it's a testimony against you for breaking the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are simple. <coughs> simple. But... The only thing that makes the hardest, the hardest part about that is the resistance, especially of the church, to keeping the Ten Commandments. 
and to worship God in spirit and truth. People don't believe, like the Bible says, Paul said, that they deny the power of the Holy Spirit. So there are people out here, this is why we testify of these things, this is why we preach, because we already know that a small remnant of people are going to believe, and they're going to hate us, other people are going to hate us, like, mi like millions of people will hate us for telling the truth, but you're, because those people despise prophecy, they don't know that in this generation, the small group of people are going to believe, and that's who we're reaching because they wouldn't do it. And that's all in prophecy, but those people that I'm talking about don't know prophecy. Because they quench the spirit. They don't know what it's talking about. That's why they're going to hate you. Right? It's a threat to them. They're threatened by the truth. But the prophecy says they don't want the truth. And that's why great is the fall. It's a de this is the generation of God's wrath. Okay? So it doesn't matter what, what they think, what they say. Don't be afraid of their faces or their looks or anything like that. They're wicked people. Because, simply because they don't want to hear what the Bible says. And that's what the Bible says about them. They're appointed for this. So don't be like them. That's the point. Because you're not going to win against God. For we are his workmanship, created in Yeshua unto good works. So it's already been told to us what good works is. Look, it even says, which God before ordained that we walk in them. They keep saying, they, these same people are always quoting Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 saying, see, we're saved by favor. It's not of works. It's not of works of the law because that was added until the refreshing of the covenant. It's right there in Acts 3 again. The times of refreshing. But in Isaiah 28 says they would not believe. And by the way, Isaiah 28 is all about that same nation that's going to fall because they didn't. They didn't read scripture line upon line and they didn't accept the refreshing of the covenant, nor did they accept the, the Sabbath rest. For we are his workmanship created in Yeshua unto good works, which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. It's all in the Old Testament. These people have never read the Old Testament because they're, they're the wolf pastors told them that, oh, everything's fulfilled in the Old Testament, which is a bunch of baloney therefore remember that you being in times past gentiles you are no longer a gentile if you're grafted into the commonwealth of israel these guys resist all that like they're appointed for this destruction there's nothing i can do to stop it they it has to happen because god has ordained this generation to be his generation of wrath and the other generation that's in the last days is called the generation of the upright so they dwell together that's why the the tares and the and the wheat dwell together until the harvest and yeshua told you do not be deceived that's the sign of the end that's matthew 24 and he told you that the whole world is deceived by the devil except for the very elect and what are they doing making graven images and sorcery and all that stuff in these churches all that hokey pokey. They're casting out demons in the name of Baal. And that, that house cannot stand. Beelzebub is Baal. <coughs> and all prophecy told you, even Yeshua himself says, I come in the Father's name, which is Yah, and you will not receive me because you don't have the love of God in you, which is keeping the Ten Commandments. You're not going to receive the spirit of truth unless you do keep the Ten Commandments. It's a covenant. It's the marriage covenant. How are you going to be married and be the bride if you're not keeping the covenant. That's the contract. That's what a covenant is. It's a contract. Wherefore, remember that you being in times past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. <laughs> people don't like when everybody's disobedient they're gonna hate you for this that's why there's so much resistance going on it's that simple but now in the same book look but now in yeshua messiah ye who were sometimes far off are made nigh by the blood of christ so his blood by his sacrifice any sacrificial law enabled the spirit to come to you that's the only way you get the spirit of truth for he and grace for he is our peace which is the commandments again who hath made both one and broke down the wall 
broke down the middle wall of, of partition between us. So that there was a block in between us and God because of sin. Especially speaking about the northern kingdom. See, they, when they're punished, they're booted out. Now they can come back because of the blood of Christ. And nobody went, look, and the Gentiles included, because you have to think about this. When, when a whole kingdom of people get scattered into the Gentiles, they're going to become blended. They're going to, be, they're going to be, become blended people. And so that wall is broken down and they're allowed to return Gentile or Northern Kingdom. They're all allowed to come and enter into the covenant. Having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances. This is, I'll read it in, in Colossians if I can remember. For to make in himself twain one new man, so making peace. Look at now here's Colossians is just a different version of the same thing I just read. And you being dead in your sins and the uncircumcision of your flesh hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. That was the law of Moses in handwriting, not the finger of God on the, on the tablets of stone. Like, it's just crazy. It's, ab it's insane absolutely insane that the Christian church will not listen to this. Do not be like them because the wrath of God is coming right around the corner. The time is almost over. Let no man deceive you with vain words. Because of these things comes the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not therefore partakers with them. For you were sometimes in darkness, but now ye are in the light of the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And righteousness has nothing to do with self-righteousness. It's the Ten Commandments. That's what you need to follow. And what's wrong with that? It's crazy. God wants you to worship Him on the Sabbath day. He wants you to make no graven image like the Christian church does all the time. <laughs> Like it even tells you in prophecy that these women are going to wear the crucifix right between their breasts. <coughs> They're going to make in another, that's in, that's in uh, Hosea chapter two, which is also where he's going to take the names, the name of Baal out of people's mouths. Well, they have to be calling him. What's the name of Baal? If he's in the end days, when the second exodus takes place, which they also don't know about this, they, lots of them think they're getting poofed up to a galaxy far, far away because they watch way too much Walt Disney and they don't read their Bible. They go to the churches just like the Bible says they're going to do and they're going to have their teachers itching their ears and they're going to turn their hearts to fables and we are commanded to sharply rebuke fables. That is what we are to do so that people are sound in the faith. But in the end, they're not going to listen. You know, because they're given up to covetousness and all the, they, they break the commandments like crazy. They even get, they'll get angry at you. <coughs> it says, even your children are going to give you up to be murdered, which even hating your, even if you hate somebody for no reason is murder in God's eyes. So, and that's the way they're going to behave. So you can expect it. See, when you have the word of God, you already know what's going on. So, this is the reason why the wrath of God comes. So when P Peter is telling you that you're not to be ignorant of this mystery, that the day of the Lord, or that a day with the Lord is a thousand years. I'll see if I can't quickly find that for you. Two thousand years is almost up. He wrote a letter. 
I'll read you this. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, which is the law, being disobedient, wherein also they were appointed. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, a peculiar people, those who keep the covenant. It's mentioned five times in scripture. It's those who keeps the covenants of promise. A peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Which in times past were no people, but now are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. See, this is all talking end days. Because the return, this is the elect rising up out of the Gentiles. They'll spring up like the grass, surnaming themselves as Israel, Jacob, and I am the Lord's. Same chapter, 44, that where they make the, the image, the, the crucifix and all that stuff, and they're, they put it in their houses and they nail it to the floor so that it doesn't move. Same thing they do to the Christmas tree. But the portion of Jacob is not like them. Because when he takes iniquity from Jacob, it's the same thing it's talking about in Romans. Again, I'll bring that up to those who have never heard this before. Like the ignorance people have this Bible and speak any, like the pastors are like cooked. If you're a pastor today, you're pretty, you're preordained. So you're lying to God's people and it'd be required at all these pastors' hands. That's why they make merchandise of you. That's why they're so wealthy and they lie to you and they allow you to feel comfortable in doing pagan idolatry in God's house. And that's why this, this verse right here was written. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses said, I will provoke you to jealousy and by them who are no people and by a foolish nation, I will anger you. Okay, that's all about the judgment. The, se the second song, the new song of Moses in Deuteronomy 32, that has never taken place yet. It will. It's about to actually. And in fact, it's only us who know that that song, they absolutely shut their ears to hearing that song. It's a song that's going to be sung to them. It's about their destruction. It's about the wrath of God. It's about the 144,000. For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. And so all Israel shall be saved, as it is written, there shall come out of Zion a deliverer, and shall turn away <coughs> ungodliness from Jacob. So Jacob's my servant. It's talking about Old Testament. This is all talking about prophecy in the Old Testament. And it, has, it doesn't happen until the last days. So when he turns away iniquity from Jacob, Jacob is a servant and he's going to go up against the entire church. That's what's going to happen. He's going to provoke them to anger by a foolish nation. That foolish nation is Mystery Babylon. Mystery Babylon is going to get punished severely because they created many, many harlot denominations and they are very proud of that nation. They got it stamped right on their forehead for all to see spiritually speaking here. So then when Jacob arises, who shall Jacob arise? For he is small. That's in Amos. I think it's Amos. <coughs> like nobody believes in the Christian church, this Bible. They've been, they've been easily convinced and swayed to reject everything that Paul is talking about in the Old Testament. Peter even told them that this is what they do. We'll go back to Peter. Peter's telling the truth about this. And the account and the long suffering are, of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you, as also in all of his epistles, speaking in them things which are some things hard to be understood, which they are they that are unlearned and unstable rest, as they do also the other scriptures, unto their own destruction. Because they don't know that Paul's always quoting the Old Testament. They reject the Old Testament. So when Paul says something in the Old Testament, you be a Berean and search, search the scriptures daily to see if what Paul's saying is true. And if you don't search the scriptures about what Paul's saying, you're not going to understand them to your own destruction. It's way easier, actually. I, I recommend that most of you 
stay away from Paul for the time being until you listen to what 1 John, 2 John, 3 John is talking about. Read the Gospels. They're very, very simple. You listen to the Messiah and or even the book of Acts. I'll read the book of Acts, a portion of that, just to write to the page again. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing, the refreshing of the covenant, shall come from the presence of the Lord. And he shall send Yeshua Messiah, which was before preached unto you in the Old Testament, whom the heavens must receive until the times of restitution. So you're in the refreshing of the covenant until... He makes the new covenant, the refreshing, and then the restoration of the kingdom, the restoration of all things, which God has spoken by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. <coughs> so there's this distance between the refreshing and the restitution, and it's all written in the Old Testament, which he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets since the world began. And Moses truly said unto the fathers, A prophet shall the Lord your God rise up unto you of your brethren, like unto me, him you shall hear in all things, whatever he shall say unto you, and it shall come to pass that, that every soul which will not hear that prophet shall be destroyed from among the people. Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and all those that followed after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days where you're going to be destroyed from among the people. You are the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers. This is old. Walk in the old paths. They were ordained of old that we walk in them. You're the children of the prophets and of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, and in thy seed shall all kindreds of the earth be blessed. That means all the Gentiles. We just read it in Acts through Paul's mouth. That it's time for everybody to repent. He used to wink at this ignorance, but now he commands everyone to repent and turn from their wicked ways and doing their pagan idolatry, which is what they full-blown are doing right now. Christmas and Easter has nothing to do with the Son of God or the Father. <coughs> Unto you first, having raised up his son Yeshua, sent him to bless you in turning every way one of you away from iniquity. What does he say? Depart from me, I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. So how does that tie into, let's, let's, this is how it ties into what he says in John. John chapter 5, verse 42 and 43. But I know you, that you, you have not the love of God in you. Now what's the love of God? that we keep his commandments and they're not a burden. I know that you do not have the love of God in you, for I have come in my Father's name and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. He already knows what you're going to do. This is the, the Son of God already knows what prophecy even says. But the people, now you need to know this. Jacob is different than Israel. It, in this, the context of the scriptures. So he's going to turn iniquity from Jacob and all Israel is going to be saved. That means the servants rise up. They're the only ones that are going to understand Revelation. It tells you right in Revelation. They're the only ones. And that like apostate pastors have no clue. They're your leaders, but they don't listen. They don't, they don't teach obedience. The Bible is against the end days church. It's the generation of God's wrath. Simple, 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 simple. <coughs> if you read your Bible. These people don't read their Bible. So all Israel gets saved because God has already preordained and counted them in ignorance. And he's going to require it at the pastor's hands. It will be required at their hands. Not just the pastors, but all shepherds that have the word of God that put stumbling blocks in front of anyone in Israel. And it'd be better that a millstone be wrapped around your neck than you cause any one of God's children any offenses at all. That's why many people, that's why health's enlarged herself. Like people are going to oppose you. Everybody could repent if they wanted to, but they don't want to because they love this world more than following after what Yeshua taught them. And every soul which will not hear that prophet will be destroyed from amongst the people. This is what it's quoting. When Moses said it, this is what it's quoting. The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from amidst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him you shall hearken, according to all that thou desired of the Lord thy God in Horeb. 
That was the Ten Commandments, the life-giving water. And he added no more. That's what it tells you. When it happened, Deuteronomy 5, 1 to 22. And 22? So listen, I'll just keep going here. According to all that thou desired of the Lord thy God in Horeb, in the day of assembly, saying, Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire any more, that I die not. That fire judgment's coming. The Christian church, 2.4 billion Christians do not believe this book. And the Lord said unto me, They have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken unto my words, <coughs> which he shall speak in my name, not in the name of Jesus or Jesus. His name is Yah. Yah saves is Yeshua. That's what it means. I will require it of him. That Peter, when he interprets this, he says they will be destroyed from among the people. Whosoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, which is Jesus, even that prophet shall die. See, the salvation comes from the Jews. He's a Hebrew. Yet there's no other name given under heaven. And God has said it quite a few times that they call him by the name of Baal, that he will not give his glory unto another name. He will not. People don't listen. They're sloppy. And then they get sloppier and sloppier. It's because they're filled with disobedience. They don't want to be corrected. Thank God that God is merciful and he's going to show mercy to whomever he deems as Israel. He's going to count them in ignorance because people were unfaithful with the word of God. And he, But he requires it out of others' hands, those who unlawfully taught. This is the promise. Our 12 tribes are hoping to see fulfilled as they earnestly serve God day and night. The prophet which shall speak, or which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to, to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. So if you're speaking in a different name, you're going to die, according to this. And if you presume, so if you're presumptuous in the Father's name, you will also be killed. So that's a big problem. The, the great transgression of the servants because the servants is an end days calling. Many are called and few are chosen. Pray ye the Lord of the harvest for the harvest is plenty, but the workers are only few. And I'll tell you right now, if you read Daniel, it tells you that many are going to turn back to righteousness. So even if you guys don't believe in God right now, things are going to get pretty hot here soon. You remember this. You remember this when... When you realize you're in tribulation because it's coming around the corner, according to the Bible. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. This is the northern kingdom. And you shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether the Lord shall lead you. And there you shall serve gods. This is the Christmas and Easter going on. The whole world's deceived by mystery Babylon. <coughs> it's a very covetous practice. It's very erroneous it's all about ancient pagan stuff they used to have a brief on it at least one way of explaining uh this these traditions they would at easter time they would sleep with the the young priestess that, that they would i don't know the families would give these priests or young women as priestesses and the the priest would basically have an orgy with them they'd get pregnant at the at the time of what we call Christmas today, which is the the um, winter solstice, they worship the winter solstice because it's the birth of the sun. These ch children would be born around that time, and then they get sacrificed again at Easter, and they would dip the eggs. They dip eggs in the blood of the children. These are the kinds of traditions that happened ancient times ago. And there's variances. They all did it different ways because there's many different nations and and whatever that would do different traditions like this and now today god's church is doing this they're not killing babies but spiritually they are so when people spiritually 
do these things, then they get the demonic. They we don't wrestle with flesh and blood, blood with with principalities, and that's why there's so many abortions going on, and even sodomy and everything that's going on. So when pride comes before destruction, the sin that leads to death is is idolatry. And John told you that, and you know they don't believe the Christians do not believe the New Testament at all. What they want to believe is that they got to believe that Jesus died on the cross and nailed all the sins to the cross and they don't have to obey nothing. It was the law of Moses contained in ordinances that was nailed to the cross so that everybody could enter into the commandments, or the, the covenant, which is the Ten Commandments. And here's, the, here's where it's written what Galatians 3 and 4, well, Galatians 3 is talking about is here a Deuteronomy. See, Deuteronomy 32 is the new song of Moses. And li even listen to this last couple verses. For I know that after my death you shall... This is 31. It goes right into the song of Moses, and it's all about the punishment in the last day's generation for being so wicked. And they're, they're just talking about Sodom and Gomorrah. Like, their rock is not our rock. Their rock has sold them. They were bought with a price, but the rock sold them. That price was Yeshua. But these are dis disobedient, wicked people, and they're going to get destroyed by the four, the four horsemen. And they're roaming the earth until they seal the 144,000 on their foreheads. And these people are going to be, you know, no weapon formed against you will prosper. That means people are going to go up against them, but no weapon shall be prosper. And then they return and they judge the world and they condemn everybody who condemned them. That's the, that's the way the story goes. For I know that after my death, you will utterly corrupt yourselves and turn aside from the way which I have commanded you and will and evil will befall you in the latter days. Because you, you will do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to anger through the work of your hands, which means idolatry. And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. See, Israel is not thought of anymore because people don't even know that, see, though the seed of Israel be like the sand of the seas, because what happened is through the generations, Israel's dispersed into all nations. Like they don't literally exist anymore. But within all the Gentiles, all some point in their family, there will be Isra Israeli blood, put it that way. But this elect... By election, and it's all, this is the story. By election, God raises up. Many are called through the spirit of grace, which is conviction, but only few choose to do it. I should even read Deuteronomy 32. But I want to go, I want to go back to Deuteronomy 4 because this is another latter days warning. And I, those of you who don't believe, you guys still have it. The purpose even, part of the purpose of tribulation is to give everybody a, a Bible spanking, uh, well, physically, really. Because God's going to prove that he's true and you better pay close attention to what I'm about to read right now. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations and you shall be left few in number among the heathen, whether the Lord shall lead you. And there you shall serve other gods, the work of man's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor nor eat nor smell. But, but, if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou shalt seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul, when you are in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and thou shalt be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God and he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swore unto them. So, when you're in tribulation in the latter days and all these things come upon you, turn and repent and he'll still show you mercy. That is what he's told you. Way back in the law, he knows what's going on and he wrote it all in prophecy. There's very few people that understand prophecy. There's very few people that care enough about you to shout from the housetops what he's saying. People do not believe this book. So that's why tribulation's coming. The world is, well, the church is 100% apostate. They are not telling you these things. And so he raises up his own, his own guys to do this for you, to tell you and warn you. And then you're going to know. I'll read it to you. 
They're called watchmen. Yeshua says it in Mark 13. That what I say unto the porter, I say unto all, watch. That means to become a watchman. That means to fulfill the royal law. According to scripture, the royal law is to love your neighbor as yourself. And that means to rebuke the sin so people have the chance to repent. That other people who have this grandiose idea of themselves are the ones going into destruction. And he said unto me, son of man, Stand upon thy feet, and I will speak unto thee. This is end days prophecy. Revelation chapter 10, verses 9, 10, and 11 is quoting this. That's why only the people who understand Revelation are going to be, be able to explain these things to you. And the Spirit entered into me when I spoke unto, unto me, and set me upon my feet, and I heard him that spake unto me. And he said unto me, Son of man, I send thee to the children of Israel. Remember this. There's, 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 there's uh, great as the sand of the sea. That's how many. Because they're scattered into all the Gentiles. But only a remnant's going to be saved. So I, I suggest you be the people to listen, because it's right around the corner. 2,000 years is almost up, and there's 3.5 years of tribu great tribulation. Yeshua told you, what's the sign of the end? That the whole world's going to be deceived. For many shall come in my name, claiming that I'm the Messiah, and will deceive many. These people, they're, the, I'm telling you right now, they're making merchandise of God's people. But my people love to have it so. That's what prophecy says. And they want the smooth ear tickling words. They turn their ears from hearing the law of God. If you hear the law of God, you will recognize you don't have to do sacrificial law. It was ended. You have to keep the covenants. There's two covenants, the rainbow covenant, which was given to the whole world. And it was a promise that he's going to destroy it with fire. That's the promise. That's why he told you to keep the covenant of the rainbow covenant. And he gave it to everybody. Then he reminded Israel when they, when they came out of Egypt in the first Exodus, he reminded them to keep that covenant. And the, that's the covenant of promise. One of them, the other covenant of promise is the 10 commandments. And it's really easy to keep you guys. The hardest thing that you're going to find to do is to warn your neighbors because they're going to hate you. So if you really trust God, then you'll do it anyways. And there's a promise that all your children will be saved. But they're going to hate you and they're going to deliver you up to judges and councils and synagogues. Why, that means churches, by the way. Why would they deliver you up in the last days to churches if the church was... And they're going to scourge you in the church. Why would they do that if the churches weren't apostate? You see? He said unto me, Son of man, I send you to the children of Israel. Remember, we're grafted into the commonwealth of Israel. To a rebellious nation that has rebelled against me, they and their fathers have transgressed against me even to this very day. End days. For they are imputed children and stiff-hearted. I do see thee. I do send thee unto them, <coughs> that thou shalt say unto them, Thus says Yehovah. Yehovah is the Father's name. And Yeshua comes in his Father's name. But they won't receive him because they don't have the, the agape of God in them. For this is the agape of God, that we keep his commandments, and his commandments are not grievous. John 5, 1 John 5. And they, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house. You shall know, or yet shall, the, shall know that there had been a prophet among them. So, I'll stop there for a second and reiterate what I always tell you about this. This All of Ezekiel has not taken place. Okay? It's all end days. Well, I mean, it is, it is, it is taking place right now. That's the, that's the thing. See, Ezekiel one is all about the hundred forty-four thousand. Ezekiel two and three, which I'm reading right now, is about the watchmen and the four archangels around the throne, the four horsemen, the four beasts. It's like right in here. It keeps going. By the time you get to chapter ten, again, chapter nine is about the destruction of Jerusalem. Which Jeremiah seventeen is quoting, and John eight when Yeshua writes in the in the dirt. Twice? Yeah. It's all talking about the same thing. That's the end day's destruction. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them. 
neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dwells among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at the looks, though they be a rebellious house. So, the briars and thorns are talking about covetous people. The scorpions are uh, demons, really. <coughs> if that is quoting stuff about treading scorpions in the New Testament. And that would be in either Matthew, 5, or Matthew 10 or Luke 10. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear, for thou are most, they are most rebellious. So, I'll give you a clue. In Isaiah 62, it tells you that these watchmen eat the word of God. They, they give their corn and wine, which they labored for, which is reading the word of God and studying this. Great labor I have put into this book. I, have, I don't know how many thousands, tens of thousands of hours but, I mean, it, it's just, it's between 50 and 100,000 hours I've spent meditating, studying, and preaching the Word of God in the last six, well, 10 years, we'll say. Uh, like, fervently, like, nonstop, every day. I haven't taken one single day off to, to do this for you guys. Because God asked me to be a watchman. I didn't know what a watchman even was. I just sitting there chastised like crazy 10 years ago and I cried out for the truth and he spoke to me <coughs> and uh, whether you believe that or not there's a reason why I know this book and it's fulfilling prophecy and it's right here even I'll read this so you know what I'm about to quote here it's coming around the around the mount uh, around the it's coming on the pipe is what's happening all of this is already going on so much has already taken place and I went unto the angel and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, eat it up, and it shall make thy belly bitter, but, <coughs> but in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand and ate it up, and it was in my mouth sweet as honey. And as soon as, <coughs> as, soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, thou, mu thou must prophesy again before many peoples, nations, tongues, and kings. This is talking about the spirit of John. It's just a spirit. It's a condition. It's just like spiritual Egypt or spiritual Sodom. It's the spirit of John. Ezekiel, or sorry, Elijah. John the Baptist came in the spirit of Elijah. It's the same thing. That's what it's talking about. But thou son of man, hear what I say. Be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house. Open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. Eat the little roll. And when I looked and behold, the hand was sent unto me and lo, a roll of a, a book was was therein and he spread it before me and it was written within and without and in it was written lamentation mourning and woe moreover he said son of man eat that thou findest eat this roll and go speak to the house of israel so i opened my mouth and he caused me to eat the roll and he said unto me son of man cause thy belly to eat it and fill thy bowels with this roll that i give thee then i did eat it and in my mouth it was for was honey for sweetness this is quoting Revelation. Revelation's all about the end. This is what's going to happen. It's never happened before. That by the example that Ezekiel did, it's just a foreshadow of what's going to take place in the future. You will prophesy again in front of many tongues, nations, kings, and people. Like, that's what's going to happen. It's already happened, you know. And what I say to the porter, which is the watchman, I say to all, do the same thing the porter's doing. That's in Mark 13. That is your very elect. And they don't shut their mouth until New Jerusalem is a praise in all the earth. So if you're a Christian and you don't know this stuff, you really don't believe your Bible because Isaiah 62 is very clear about that. And it's talking about the bride. And Revelation 21, I believe, is talking about the 144,000. Revelation, that which is, which is New Jerusalem. <coughs> and they rule over the people. So I opened my mouth and caused me to eat it said unto me, Son of man, cause like my dead that already. And he said unto me, Son of man, go get thee into the house of Israel and speak my words to them. For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech but and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not too many people of a strange speech and a hard language, whose words thou cannot understand. Surely, had I sent you to them, they would have hearkened and, and hearkened unto thee. So he's going to speak to them in English because the, the hundred or the house of Israel scattered to the four corners of the earth. It's other prophecy. But they're all speaking the same language. If they're scattered to the four corners of the earth, still speaking the same language, it's English. Not a hard, strange speech like Paleo-Hebrew. Those are the evil servants doing that to you, if you're one of those guys. 
They're putting stumbling blocks. It's very clear not to put stumbling blocks in front of people. So here's the good news. In Ezekiel, we're in Ezekiel right now, but in Ezekiel 34, 33, the watchman warns them again. 34, who he's warning is the pastors and the shepherds. They're feeding their own bellies and they're, it's going to be required at their hand. And guess what? All the people that I've been working for for 10 years, they get saved anyway. And I love that. And that being shown that more recently, it wasn't really revealed to me until the Beatitudes were really real, revealed to me. And it sinks into your heart. You you digest it. You eat what he gives you. That's It's not for real. Like It's not like I, I, I didn't make a sandwich out of the Bible and take a big bite out of it. It means you read this book and you believe it and you, you search the scriptures and you read line upon line and you compare and you, the Lord shows you things. He showed me the key of David, the day dawning, all the stuff that's in Revelation. He showed me how people are taking away the key of David from people. Their names get blotted out of the book of life for doing that. They were in there. They had the chance. Many were called and few are chosen. The ones that add to the book of Revelation are the ones pushing the feasts on people. And the plagues will be added unto them. And that's also in the Old Testament, Hosea 8. All of it's covered. The Bible ain't lying. Everybody's doing exactly what's going on. I said on a space the other day on Twitter, it is simple. You look at Hosea. Hosea clearly tells you there is a group of people that is going to get punished for doing God's feasts. And who is predominantly doing that right now? The United States of America. That proves to you, if you have any kind of brain at all, that the United States of America is Ephraim just because of their behavior. Because the behavior of people is recorded more than anything in this book. Like, your enemies will be that of your own house. Your children will give you up to be killed. Things like that. People do this. The people are going to be filled with hate. The love of many will wax cold because of iniquity. They don't want to keep the commandments. So they... And they're the generation of God's wrath because of vain words. All this stuff, it's going on. There's people that desire the terrible the day of the Lord. Those are the ones that want the pre-trib rapture. Doing the feasts and their songs and God hates them. You know, there's those who are eating swine's flesh that are smoking God's nose that say, we are holier than thou. Stand by thyself. See it everywhere. It's going on right now. Like my brothers and sisters are getting, getting the snot kicked out of them just for putting the Ten Commandments on the church door and reminding people then that's what we're supposed to do. Tell the people to repent. That's loving your neighbor as yourself. And these people hate you for it. You see? And you know what? Even me, right in front of your face, fulfilling prophecy right now, giving you the word of God as commanded. I tell the porter, I tell all. Watch. I'm not going to read any more of that. If you want to read more, you read it yourself. I can bring light to where these things are. I know the book, this book like the back of my hand. And I care about you people and that's the only reason why I do this because God has put that spirit into me to care about his people. But of that day and hour knows no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the son, but the father. Take ye, he, remember the part I said, you're gonna know there is a prophet in your midst? You will, I promise you that. But of that day and hour knows no man. No, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take heed, watch, and pray. For you know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is a man taking a far journey who left his house and gave authority to his servants and to every man his work and commanded the porter to watch. This is when he comes like a thief in the night. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master comes at evening, midnight, cock crowing, or in the morning lest coming suddenly find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch, all of you, watch. Start warning your neighbors what I'm telling you. If you cannot do it yourself, then you give them a video. There is hundreds of videos that I made. All of them are relevant. And you're not gonna catch me lying. This coming in the, like a thief in the night, let's go to Thessalonians again. And I'll remind you what's coming down the pipe here. Paul is not talking to anybody in the world except for the end days generation when he says this. And that's in Thessalonians 4 and 5. And he tells you who to read it to, to the holy brethren. But it's, whether you are or not, you're still going to know this because I'm going to read it to you. Where did it go? Other way.
I'll remind you here in 2 Thessalonians. Well, no, we'll go to 1 Thessalonians first. So, when Paul's talking here, hold on a second. Dad's watching the, the book of Acts and it's over, so all the music is all noisy. So, Paul is talking to the people in the end days when the day of the Lord comes, like a, a thief in the night, which is when the devil gets cast down. And the devil gets cast down. Isaiah 28 is very important. It's a very strict warning to Ephraim. And they're the ones doing the feast, you guys, and they're doing it right now in the United States of America. They're the ones doing the feast. They go into tribulation because of it. And they're with Judah. All of a sudden, when they're in tribulation, Judah's going to smarten up. Okay? That's when he smartens up. Then Judah is with his God. They're going to they're gonna realize they made a big mistake. And these are the ones that, this is what it says to those. For we say unto you by word of the Lord that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with a voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain, that means you sur survive tribulation shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Okay, so they're going to, even by me saying it now, or others saying it, or they have their Bible, when it, this all goes down, it's those who survive the tribulation, the resurrection doesn't happen until the end. So they have to go through the tribulation. And this is all Hosea 8. To the end of the book. This is Ephraim and Judah. If they're doing the feast. That's why the unjust steward says. Whoa quickly write a check for half. Means you owe the Lord. But they scattered his goods. Scattering his goods means his sheep. That's what happened. That's why the unjust steward. Is wiser than the children of light. When he tells them quickly write a check for half. Instead of putting all the stumbling blocks. They're not allowed. When you get punished by God and kicked out of his land, you're not allowed to do his feasts. But these guys are presumptuous. It's the great transgression of the servants. Many called, few chosen. Those servants, that's uh, Psalm 19. But it's, there's a lot of references. You can go watch my dumb dogs video. Dumb dogs that can't bark, that feed their own bellies. That's Ezekiel uh, 34. I was mentioning it. And Isaiah 56. But of the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for you, you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes like a thief in the night. And that's because they learned the parable of the fig tree, which is in Isaiah 28. We know what it means. And therefore, as long as we're watching, waiting, overcoming, then he doesn't come unto us like a thief in the night because we're doing what he told us to do. <clears throat> For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So when you go to Isaiah 66, you're going to see the same idioms mentioned here. But anyways, you are the children of the light and the children of the day. You are not of the night nor the darkness. This is, this is Isaiah uh, 29 talking. Therefore, let us not sleep as others. But let us watch and be sober. This is Isaiah 29. This is talking about that. For they that sleep in the night and they that are drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and, lo and love and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God has not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Yeshua Messiah. So these guys, as you continue on, they do not despise prophecy. This is one thing. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast, which is good. The same group of people. They're proving all things in prophecy because there, there will be a prophet amongst them. They are going to enter into the work of the prophets, reap what they sow, and together they're going to rejoice with the prophets. And Yeshua told them to do this. That's how come. They, Yeshua also told you the prophets were until John. That means everything's already said. Everything's already said in the scriptures and the foolish church <coughs> rejects the Old Testament. Revelation's quoting over 600 places. So... And there'll be scoffers and mockers in the last days. You're going to see all of this happening. They're going to turn their ears from hearing the word, the truth, and they turn their hearts to fables. No, we'll go 
the other way. I charge you before God and the Lord Yeshua, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. That's the restoration of all things. Preach the word, be instant in season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long-suffering doctrine, for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But be a watchman in all things, endure affliction, do the work of evangelists, make full proof of your ministry. That's how you do it. You read the word of God. All the prophets already said everything that needs to be said. This know also in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those who are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Do not have anything to do with these people. They, don't, they deny the power of the Holy Spirit. They don't even know what it is. They think it's unmerited favor. They don't, they don't want the truth. For this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with diverse lusts, ever learning but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now as Jans and Jambres withstood Moses, so do these resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further, for their folly shall be manifest unto all men as theirs, as theirs also was. That's end days prophecy is going to happen. It'll be people teaching the truth, teaching obedience, teaching repentance, teaching you what the word of God says, teaching the prophecy, warning you about your destruction if you don't repent. That's who's going to go up against these wicked pastors in the last days and the people. And then God's wrath will come upon them as recorded. And the slain of the Lord will be many. And all you had to do is repent. It's ridiculous. But that's because the wick the wick your wickedness, you know, back to this is the reason this is how it's going down right now. Because now I beseech you, brethren, this is uh, 2 Thessalonians 2. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of Yeshua Messiah and by the gathering together unto him, that you be not soon shaken in mind nor troubled, neither by spirit, by word, or letter from us, as that day of Messiah is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first. This is, he's just quoting what Yeshua said. Many shall be not deceived, for many shall come, claiming that I'm the Messiah, and shall deceive many. So it's those people who claim he's the Messiah, but they'll deceive many. And the man of, of sin re be revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So they're all claiming that this Christmas Jesus guy is God. Remember ye not that when it's being, it's being exposed, the truth is being, they're calling him by the name of Baal. That's why when the remnant that gets saved anyways, they get counted in ignorance. He takes the name of Baal out of their mouth. That means it has to be in their mouth. But they get, they, get, um, um, they get counted in ignorance. Praise God. And he blames it on the, on the shepherds. The shepherds who won't rebuke, the shepherds that are feeding their own, own bellies, the shepherds that are making merchandise of God's people, all the shepherds that transgress against him, all those who are, I'll read it in Matthew. I'm going to go there. We'll go to Matthew 5 briefly too. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things? And now you know that withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. That's talking about the 144,000. He that withholdeth that he be, might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who now lets will let. He who lets will let until he be taken out of the way. The man child gets caught up to the throne. That's Zechariah chapter 3. That's Isaiah 66. That's Revelation chapter 12. 
And by the way, there's two signs in Revelation 12. The first one happened back in 2017. So this is the birth pangs. This is where people have been trying to wake you guys up. This is where he's calling many, but only few choose to do the work. Yeah, like it, all prophecy is coming true right now for a long time too, for what, quite a while. For the mystery of iniquity does already work. Only he who lets will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, which is the antichrist spirit of error, with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness, which is breaking the Ten Commandments, in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. You see? All our sins are nailed to the cross. No. Sacrificial law was nailed to the cross. It was not going to be held against you if you would have simply kept the commandments and did what Yeshua told you. If you choose to enter into life, keep the commandments. And for this cause, God shall send them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So there you go. That's Paul telling you. You see, these people in the church that claim that they listen to Paul do not listen to Paul at all. They twist his words. They look, they search, literally search through the scriptures to try to... to um, which is, it's just terrible. They, they look for excuses <coughs> to disobey God and then they teach their children to do that. And others, they make their proselytes twice the children of hell. See, the, the, people don't get what God's all about. This whole travailing that we were talking about, travailing, and they, they don't escape, right? You just read it? I'll read it in Isaiah. You're the children, where is it? I read that again. Oh yeah. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as travail upon a woman with child and they shall not escape. So this is, a, look at it, what it says in Isaiah. It's all the same. This is all over the place really. That travailing, it, even in Yeshua, brings it up. When he calls it the, this is just the birth pangs, or, or uh, where does he say that? Where, it's, when he says it's the sorrows, that's what he's talking about. Birth pangs, sorrows, birth, that's what it's all about. Isaiah is a really good book to read, you guys, because it's very, very end days. Ezekiel's as well, all of Hosea, everything. Every prophet from Samuel to Malachi prophesied about the destruction of this generation. And only very few people are brave enough to even read it to the others so that they have a chance. Here's the thing, it's already done. The way I look at this is everything's done. So whatever we go through from henceforth, as long as we're walking in his ways and warning other people, the book is already written. It's done. We just have to be living moments before the end. When you already know what's in here, it's as though it doesn't matter where you're at. It's the end that you're, you, you already know what the end of the book says. So you just do what this book is saying and you're, you're a okay. Not, nothing is going to be against you or will prevail anyway. So this is what happens. The first part of this is about the guys that in Isaiah 66 to like, say verse five, like you that tremble at, at his word, your brethren. So these are the guys that are woke up your brethren that hated you, that cast you out for my name's sake, said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy and they shall be ashamed. So that has to happen. This is those who are doing the feasts. Those who kill an ox as if he killed a man. Those who slay a lamb as though he cut a dog's neck. 
Yeah, to us, that's what it's like. In Isaiah 1, that's what it's like to God. Isaiah 66, we think like God in that way. So it's to us, it's the same thing. We warn them, then they put us out, and then they hate us. But they glory God in their, with their mouth, <coughs> but it'll be to their shame and our joy. And then it goes right into this. Before she travailed, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who hath heard such a thing, and who has seen such things? Shall the earth, the earth uh, be made to bring forth, forth in one day, or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth her children. That's the man-child. And the foolish are going into tribulation. And that's why in Luke 12 also, see Luke is a pretty good book. Like the Gospel of Luke. It tells you some of these things. So in Luke 12, it tells you that the foolish virgins will be ready to open up to the Lord after, after the wedding. And it's because they're doing the feasts. You see, they call it the Torah movement. And we're all in the, you know, the Torah is the instruction of God. But what they're not catching on, Deuteronomy is the second instruction. And it's written in the context of the kingdom of Israel being scattered to the four corners of the earth. As we read, in the latter days, you'll be scattered to the four corners. And then, few of you remaining. That part. So, it, the whole book is in that context. And it tells you in like Deuteronomy 12, Deuteronomy 16, do not do these things as you see fit anywhere as you do this day. It's because when you're scattered, he does not want his feast being done. It was taken away from the people. Which there's, there's much, much prophecy written about this. It's absolutely mind-blowing. But it's to me, it's mind-blowing because when you really don't have faith or you have when you're really not keeping the covenant, because the, the main reason why most people who are in the Torah movement, they cannot get rid of covetousness. That's the one they cannot get rid of. And so they're coveting after God's feasts and they're doing that which is right in their own eyes and some of them will repent, but most of them won't because they have to fulfill the prophecy. You see? And one of my brothers is going to go up against a, a bunch of them soon and they're going to probably cast them out. Maybe a couple of them will listen to them, but they're going to cast them out just like Isaiah 66 says, Hear the word of the Lord, you that tremble at his word. Okay, that means the poor spirit. Poor in spirit means you tremble at his word. Okay, that's the Beatitudes, which we're going there too. It's so amazing what the Beatitudes actually mean. So the Beatitudes have to do with those of us who, who um, mourn over Zion, New Jerusalem. We mourn over her. We're poor in spirit, tremble at his word. We won't do the feasts. They do. They're being presumptuous. That's why. And whether you're a Christian or in the Torah or whatever, Torah movement, whatever, which is the instruction of God, everybody's really in the instruction of God. Just there's those on the right and those on the left and very few in the middle. Straight is the gate. And few be that find it. You see, when you find the gate, there's a porter in the gate, by the way. <coughs> Come here. Get in here. And then they hear Yeshua's voice. You were told about this in the last days. And even Yeshua told you. There's a second sheepfold that will hear his voice. He puts the porter in the gate. Well, John 10, there's a porter in the gate. Mark 13, there's a porter in the gate. The problem is they're not making the connection between Mark 13 and John 10 about the second sheepfold and all the wolves and the hirelings in the church that the, the second sheepfold's not going to hear. He didn't put a porter in the gate a thousand years ago because the, he comes like a thief in the night. It's about when he comes like a thief in the night. When he comes like a thief in the night is end days when it's about when it's done. You got 2.4 billion Christians that don't even believe their Bible. They need to go to a mental asylum. Why would you ever say that you believe the the Bible and the Messiah of the Bible, but you don't believe anything he says. Especially when you're living in the generation when he's about to come. 
I will tarry for 2,000 years. And then I'm coming back. That's what's going on here. That's what he says. That's what the word of God says. Rejoice ye with Jerusalem and be glad with her, all you that love her, and rejoice for joy with her, all you that mourn for her. Blessed are those who mourn. That's the Beatitudes. Matthew 5. We're going there for another purpose, but those who mourn for her, people are going to go up against you because you mourn for her. Blessed are the poor in spirit that tremble at his word, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. You see? Whose is the kingdom of heaven? Those who are poor in spirit that tremble at his word. We just read it in Isaiah. Oh, I didn't actually. For those things that my hand made, and those things have been, says the Lord. But to this man will I look, even him that is, is poor and of a contrite spirit that trembles at my word. Blessed is the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The poor in spirit. This is also in the Psalms. The poor in spirit that tremble at his word. Blessed are they that mourn. For they shall be comforted. They're mourning for Jerusalem. It's just, all it is is idioms. And it's what it is, is about people fulfilling those prophecies. You see? When he says blessed, it means they're doing what the prophets said. And they're, become, they're watching for Israel. Be a watchman. What I say to the porter, I say to all, watch. That's fulfilling the royal law. Blessed are those who fulfill the royal law. There's no law against them if they fulfill the royal law. There is no law against them. Blessed are the meek, which is meekness of wisdom. Meek actually means wisdom. For they shall inherit the earth. It's not your own wisdom. It's God's wisdom. He gives you the spirit of truth, the second comforter as Yeshua said, but the people in the end days church deny the power of the Holy Spirit. <coughs> and they're given up to fables and then God gives them the strong delusion. Blessed are they that do hunger and thirst after righteousness, which is the Ten Commandments. For they shall be filled. They hunger after. They want to know the truth. Other people want to know what to get away with. And then they impose it on other people. They're damned for that. Blessed are the merciful. Merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. If you don't show people the truth, you're not being merciful at all. Blessed are the pure in heart. They got clean hands. For they shall see God. When you wash your hands, it's talking about being a watchman. So when Paul said, when he, Paul was literally talking about being a watchman when he went to the Pharisees for three days in a, or three Sabbaths in a row and he says, I wash my hands. Your blood is on your own hand. So that's, that's what's going on there. Well, clean hands means you've warned the people. And you warn them a couple, three times, and then you just walk away. You've done your job. You don't have to do it anymore. You, the New Testament even tells you that in Titus as well. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. If you're lying to people, you ain't a peacemaker. A peacemaker is the covenant of peace covenant of peace is the Ten Commandments, which enables God's Spirit to grow and dwell in you. You're the temple. Put the ark, the ark is your heart, put the Ten Commandments inside. Get rid of the sacrificial law. By putting the, the Ten Commandments in your heart, the sacrificial law no longer is a testimony against you. But if you don't put the Ten Commandments in your heart, it is a testimony against you. And that's why in Galatians 4 it says, the children of Hagar will not rule with the children of New Jerusalem. That Hagar is Mount Sinai. New Jerusalem is the Ten Commandments. Right in Galatians. Galatians 4 is quoting Isaiah 54. Well, look at what it says in Isaiah 54 about his servants then. If Galatians 4 is quoting Isaiah 4, 54, and it's all about his servants that, that can't be comforted, look at what it says. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. And then it says those who cannot be comforted will be comforted. You see, like Isaiah 54 is just mind-blowing, really. I'll get to it later, but... 
I want to read, read you this about your pastor Bob and your rabbi Bob. Whosoever shall break one of the least of these commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. That's not a good thing. Now, the problem with this is, no matter which way you slice it. See, I know what that means, but let's just pretend it's way the Christian church says that. Oh, well, that just means we're going to be the least in the kingdom of heaven. And they're okay with that. They think they're going to heaven and they're just going to be, you know, at the bottom of the totem pole. And they're okay with that. They'll just keep sinning. Doesn't matter. That, literally, that's how they interpret that. That's not what it's saying at all, though. And here's the, here's the attitude behind it. Listen to this. But whosoever shall do and teach them shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. So here's the problem. If God calls these people great who keep his Ten Commandments and teach others to do so, why in the world would anybody in the Christian church whatsoever, especially the pastors, ever go up against those who are doing this? You've got to think about that because right now, even the Mormon church has, has charged, you never go to law with your brother. And they have charged my brothers with felonies for warning them about Isaiah 3, all of these things. You never go to law with your brother, and that's in 1 Timothy. These men are not obeying the Bible, and they're your leaders. And every Mormon church, just the Mormon church, they, we, they're going to Catholic churches, they're going to synagogues, they're going everywhere, trying to give people the truth, trying to help them, save them, so they have the opportunity to repent. Blessed are those who keep, who do the commandments of God and teach others to do so. Why in the world would anybody go up against those guys? They're blessed and called great in the kingdom of heaven. Well, here's what it really means when you're called least in the kingdom of heaven. I have to go back to Isaiah 66, and I'm just going to read you the last two verses. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come and worship before me, says the Lord, and they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me, for their worms shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched. And they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. It's the same thing as the rich men and Lazarus. They're going to be looking down and being called least in the kingdom of heaven. They're going to be an abhorring unto all flesh least in the kingdom. By those who are in the kingdom of heaven, they're going to be called least, down in the bottom of that pit. Because they're breaking the commandments and teaching others to do so. For I say unto you, except your righteousness shall exceed, exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, you shall in no case enter the kingdom of heaven. You see, if, you do, if you're not going to teach others, do and teach others to keep the commandments, you're not even going to the kingdom. So people look at these verses and say, oh, that's impossible. So they just make, they say, they just disregard that. Even though it says in 17, think not, this, oh, that's all they did is they just think not. That's as far as they got. Think not. Okay, I'll think not. No. Think not that I come to destroy the law or the prophets. I come not to destroy, but to fulfill. He fulfilled everything that he was, he was going to fulfill from Deuteronomy to, to throughout the prophets. He came and magnified the law. That's what he fulfilled and made it honorable. Put an end to sacrificial law. He did his job. And then he went to the Father until the restoration of the kingdom for 2,000 years. And by the way, 2,000 years is almost over. And it doesn't matter if it's five years from now or this year or next year or whatever. <coughs> Churches do not go apostate overnight. The sin gets worse for three to four generations of those who hate him. Then he destroys them. So guess what? Christmas used to be illegal in the United States in the 1800s because they knew it was pagan. So what in the world are they doing it now? Why do you think so many people are so filled with wickedness? There's no judgment on the earth. Yep. Buckle up, you guys. It's coming right around the corner.
whoever shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say unto you, whoever is angry at his brother without a cause shall be in danger of judgment. So these guys are taking my, do you see what's happened? Those pastors are crucifying themselves for eternal hell by doing what they're doing to me or anybody else. And whoever, whoever's going, all the brothers and sisters, they're putting up notes for people to have a chance to read. And you know what these pastors are saying? Oh, you're causing people to be afraid. That's because you people have lied to them the whole time and the judgment's coming because they've all rejected the truth. Look at what it says about us. All these blessed guys that are mourning for Zion, warning people. You... Blessed are you when men shall revile you, persecute you, and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. These guys have entered into the work of the prophets. All the prophets, you are the children of the prophets. We read that earlier. All the prophets, the blood of the prophets is coming down on this generation. You do know that, right? And these people get angry with you for no cause because you're teaching the Ten Commandments. See, they are not believers of Yeshua, you guys. Not one of them. They're believers of their own wicked devices. That's what they're believers of. They are self-righteous. They are not... Look at this. In righteousness shall you be established. Thou shalt be far from oppression, for, it sh for you shall not fear. What do we say? The wrath of God is not appointed unto these guys right here. This is all, the New Testament's just reiterating what the Old Testament already said. This is about his servants, okay? These, the pastors in your churches are not teaching you righteousness. They are self-righteous, yes, but not righteous according to God. Even 55 chapter, I'm in 54, chapter 55 tells you what the righteousness of God is his 10 commandments. And his ways are higher than man's ways. It ain't going to change just because 2,000 years went by from Yeshua or 3,000 from the prophets. The end is coming. It's already been recorded. And you, you have to be like totally insane not to believe the prophets because your life depends on, on these things. You're about to get destroyed. And you shall be far from fear, for, from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. So they're going to gather against you. Surely, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whoever shall gather against you shall fall for thy sake. Okay? Behold, I have, this is God. God has created the smith that bloweth the coals of the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise against you in judgment thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. It, these pastors are cooked. And anybody, anybody who, who goes up against his true servants, all end days prophecy. Yes, the apostles foreshadowed what was going to come to the end by doing what they had to do back then too because that was the first sheepfold. But there's a second sheepfold. They too, Yeshua must take with them. Here we go. Those who thirst after righteousness will be... Will, here we go. Ho, everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters. This is the life-giving water, Horeb where the rock was split. He that has no money, come and buy and, you, and eat. Ye that come, buy wine and milk with, without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend your money for that which is not bread, and you, you labor for that which, is, which satisfies not? Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good. And let your soul delight in itself in fatness incline your ear and come unto me here your soul shall live and i will make an everlasting covenant with you even the sure mercies of david 
Behold, I have given him for a witness to the people, a leader and a commander to the people. Behold, thou shalt call all nations that thou knowest not, and the nations that knew not thee shall run unto thee because of the Lord thy God, and for the Holy One of Israel, for he hath glorified thee. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. That's the Sabbath day. He comes down on the Sabbath in the morning. The day dawns. Hey, Monker. Uh-oh, school's about to start. You slept in. Daddy. Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God and he will abundantly pardon. You have to repent for him to pardon you that your sins may be blotted out. The refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. That's Acts 3. For my thoughts are not your thoughts and neither are your ways my ways, says the, the Lord, says Jehovah. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your, your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain comes down, and the snow from heaven, and returns not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth the bud, that it may give seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing where I sent where it is, whereunto it is sent. For you shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing and, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the fir tree. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be that the Lord, that the Lord for a name and for an everlasting sign that shall be not cut off. The briars and thorns are, you're surrounded by briars and thorns as watchmen and up will come the myrtle tree. And his ways are higher. The covenant, the sure mercies of David, people are absolutely, absolutely insane for not believing the word of God. And that's all I have to say about that. Have a good day.